Hello, travelers, and welcome to a new episode of the Indie Diarist podcast. Today with you is your loyal Indie Diarist, Anthony L. Wolf, writer, narrative designer, and senior content manager for social media. As you guys already know, two things before we get into the core of this episode. Number one, at some point, two or three questions are going to get a little bit patchy um, from Ramon's side, my guest, and that's because we had some technical issues and I kindly asked to um, I kindly asked Ramon if he could re-record a few bits and he accepted, so it was so understanding and thank you so much Ramon for that. So um, there's that. But uh, number two is a bit more exciting as a thing, which is I have launched the official the Indie Diarist Discord server. So now you can just go on to the IndieDiarist.com and find the link to it and uh, you can join the server whenever you want. It's just a very small server, of course. Um, I just launched it this month, really. <laughs> but uh, it's it's already starting to grow, attracting some of the guests from my, from my past episodes and also some members from the community, which is always amazing. And uh, I want to build a very positive and inclusive community uh, of indie game lovers. So we will get there. It will take some time, but we will get there. If you want to already be part of that journey, please go to the IndieDiarist.com and click the link to join the Discord server. So, without further ado, let's go straight into today's episode. Number 10, I believe? Yeah, this is episode 10. Ramon Bocca from Italy. Okay, hello everybody and welcome to this new episode of the Indie Diarist Podcast. Speaking to you today, as usual, is your loyal Indie Diarist, Anthony L. Wolf. Today with me is another great guest from the Indie Game Dev community. And it's uh, Ramon, or uh, how, how would you say your name actually? Because uh, it's even unusual in Italy to have to have your name, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I would say Ramon, as you said. Ramon, okay, perfect, okay. yeah. Yes. Okay, and uh, he uh, he's tuning in straight from Italy, from Turin, I believe, uh, and he's here to represent yeah. Tiny Bull Studios, the developers of uh, Omen Exitio, or Omen Exitio, yeah. uh, among other things. So I'll I'll leave it to you and uh, just uh, tell tell me a bit about yourself. What do you do, and uh, what what are your current projects, or something like that. Okay, uh, as you heard, my name is Ramon, and uh, I'm one of the TBS producers. I have been working at TBS for four years now, and I can confidently say that uh, it's one of the best jobs I ever had. Uh, That's I, amazing, I, always great to hear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Firstly, because uh, it allows me to work with uh, one of my greatest, greatest passions, video games, of course. But also because I think uh, this it's one of the most interesting industries right now, and uh, it's uh, it's keeping war um, growing, uh, and uh, I'm uh, very happy to get uh, to get into it. Amazing, yeah. Well, uh, I have a question about uh, um, game development in Italy a bit later on, but uh, being Italian, of course, we we connected on that basis too when we when we spoke over email with with Diego, uh, who I suppose is your yeah. studio lead, uh, and uh, and and all that. But yeah, so um, th th well said, by the way, because the gaming industry is big; it's ex always expanding, and uh, it it's great to do something that you love. Uh, I see it with yeah. my current job. It's just amazing. So let's let's break the ice a little bit. So what's one game that you think everybody, everyone should play at least once? Wow. Well, um, Disco Elysium, I think. Ah, okay. Yeah, I got into it uh, and uh, I was completely, completely in love. It's narrative, it's astonishing, uh, and uh, the the way they go deep uh, to the um, uh, how can i say the characters is uh, is incredible actually i've heard that yeah i hear that the writing is amazing the story is amazing yeah. and I'm, I'm feeling something similar right now with outer wilds which is another indie game that everybody uh, talks a lot about um, and uh, don't know if you don't know if you've played that one, but I'm playing it right now, and I got um, I went into it completely blind, so I had no idea what it was about, and I had no idea of the time loop and whatnot. So for me, it was a journey of discovery for the first few hours, and I'm just loving it. It's just there's so much to do in that game, and it's so free and so fascinating in every way. So yeah, it's, yeah, uh, I have heard about it, but I never played. 
Okay, yeah, well, but, you're going. Uh, I, I do recommend it because you're definitely going to enjoy it if you like Lit Disco Elysium. So, thanks. Yeah. I always need some advices. Perfect. Uh, so, okay, well, f- um, moving on to another kind of uh, question about games and around games. Which games do you remember playing growing up? And do you think they, they're having an influence on your current work? Well, uh, sure. Uh, I remember playing a lot uh, Final Fantasy. Really, really a lot. Seven, for example. I was in love completely about uh, a JRPG in general. But uh, my actual first game was Abe Odyssey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two I great classics there. Yeah. Tons of hours, that game. Oh, no, that, tried that game is amazing. All the cons, uh, yeah. Try to discover all the secrets. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I played Abe's Exodus first, and then I, I caught up with uh, Abe's uh, Odyssey uh, via emulator at some point. Um, but great yeah, no, game it's, also, it's, Exodus, yeah. Yeah, it's it's great games, great games. And Final Fantasy VII was one of my first games too. Uh, I remember my very first game actually was, uh, well, I had like some sort of strange console that looked like an Atari, but it wasn't an Atari. No, yeah. I don't know what... <laughs> I don't know what where it ended up, but I remember that it was like um, black background, like white characters on black, black background. So it was very simple. It was very retro uh, with a foreground and a background. And, and it was the foreground was usually white. The background was black, and like pitch black. And so there was it was all pixelated. So I've never been able to find that console again, but those were my very first video games. And then when I got a PS1, I started playing Mickey's Wild Adventure. Um, great game. Yeah, that's that's a great game. Also very great hard, platform. very hard for a five-year-old. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I guess. But yeah, and uh, and do you think these games that you've played do, are they influencing the kind of work that you're doing at Tiny Bull, or or, or do you think it's uh, you're drawing inspiration from other sources? Well, uh, I agree. So I I acknowledge that those games are pretty good and they were pretty good at the time but now i'm more into narrative games uh, strictly narrative games um, because they are very very immersive more than uh, than you think and so games like uh, disco elysium games like uh, kentucky route zero or something oh, like kentucky that route are zero. my reference now Oh, Kentucky Route reference. Zero! It's so good, it's so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. And there's Love there's it. a lot of there's a lot of stuff in that game, and none of it makes sense, except a lot <laughs> of it does. And that's the beauty of it. It's just that it continues, um, a continuous journey into the mind of every single character that opens up yeah. to to the, the main characters and players. So, yeah, it's a great game. Great that you brought it up. If um, I'm not mistaken, it was made by just two engineer. I think you know it was, that? yeah. It's Cardboard Games, I think it's a, it's a studio. Um, I believe it is the car- or Cardboard Computers, either or. Um, but yeah, they were, it was just a very small team over a long period of time. Yeah, yeah it's great. Um, but here's more of a personal question for you. So when did you realize you wanted to be a game developer? Like, what was your aha moment? Well... I just uh, <laughs> I was just lucky actually because uh, the my, my first year in uh, in TBS in Tiny Bull Studios uh, my my role was uh, as a social media manager so I just managed communication uh, internal and external for the company also sometimes B two B but uh, in in that time uh, I was also learning a lot about uh, this kind of job uh, and uh, when uh, the, the the chance uh, uh, came out uh, i just took it so yeah, yeah. I, I i'm still learning a lot but uh, i can say i'm pretty confident about uh, about my work and about our projects uh, so great yeah, so you were the Luck social media manager and you moved to... a very important yeah. matter. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, knowing the right people, the right connections, and uh, being in the right uh, spaces um, yeah. and uh, and all of that. 
definitely also, useful. Also because there was no no school at the time. Oh right. For, okay. For producers mm -hmm. or for anything uh, to be to be dev. So it's pretty hard to get into this industry in Italy. Yeah, yeah, and we'll we'll get to that in a second. Uh, I I know it's it's a struggle because there used to be. Well, uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, so uh, I'm I'm curious about Tiny Bull Studios in in particular. So what's the story behind the studio? How did it come to be? Well, uh, TBS was born between uh, 2010 and 2011. The idea uh, was uh, of our CEO Matteo Lana and uh, his great friend uh, and our CTO uh, Rocco Luigi Tartaglia. And uh, they they just wanted to make make games. That was the objective. Uh, but uh, as you know, it's really hard to do it uh, in Italy, of course. And to support this uh, activity, so the creation of video games, the develop development of video games, we have been dedicated for years to providing quality service for other companies. Okay. And uh, but this uh, allowed us to develop. Uh, uh, in uh, 2018, our first two games. Okay, so you started as service providers for other companies, maybe in B2B and something like that, and then yeah, you, yeah. You, you pivoted to game development. So that's that's really interesting, yeah. I guess you needed a way to finance your, your game projects, so yeah, that's course. that's it. But yeah, okay, so well, I guess I guess this is this is more of a question for the whole studio then. What game or project of yours really matters to you so far? Like, what, what do you think is very special from what you've done? Well, Omen Exitio, I think, is our our um, pride project, okay? Because we we can manage to uh, to revive a CYOA adventure and uh, um, may, um, create also. Uh, not so big, but uh, a good community of people who loves game game books, uh, and uh, yeah, we we can manage uh, narrative uh, in a really good uh, in a really good way. Yeah. So it's, our uh, narrative game is our pride project. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, uh, as a writer, I can uh, I can relate. I, I haven't had the chance to try Omen Exit here yet, but uh, I, I I do know that you guys sent me a code, and I'm very grateful for that. So I will definitely do it before this episode comes live. Um, yeah, let so, us yeah. know. Uh, as a writer, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it. Also, I know that you guys play a lot with um, uh, cosmic horror as well. I mean, at least that seems to be the focus of the next project, like Lovecraftian yeah. monsters and all yeah. that. So yeah, that's uh, that excites me a lot as a Call of Cthulhu keeper. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, we love to to merge uh, historical, uh, real events uh, and uh, Lovecraftian settings. Oh yeah, that's that sounds like just my cup of tea then, and I'm sure many other listeners out there. Um, so, well, again, a bit more of a personal question: Why are you a game developer? What what is it that drives you forward, you personally? Well, um, since I was a kid, uh, games, uh, video games, actually, have always charmed me, uh, especially the way they transport you to incredible worlds uh, and let you embark on an extraordinary adventure. Yeah, it's uh, it's simply mesmerizing. Uh, but uh, I have to say that uh, also reading played a big role. Uh, it taught me to appreciate uh, captivating story and uh, well-crafted characters, and that's when uh, he did me, actually. I just want to create... Uh, narrative-driven experience that uh, can blend uh, the magic of literature with the interactive nature of video games. Um, as a game developer, uh, I have the power to craft virtual realms and uh, unforgettable character that, uh, that can, um, can overcome every obstacle. Uh, I want the players to feel intense emotions like me when I was a child and uh, actually actually also now. Right, yeah, well, that's the, the, the great thing. Whenever I'm creating something and I'm working with somebody to do it, there's, also, there's always that feeling of things coming together and taking shape. And once it happens, it's just the best feeling ever. Um, 
But now let's let's get into the 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 hot question of of of, of this interview, I suppose, in this episode. What's it like to be a game developer in Italy? I used to be a game journalist um, writing for various um, gaming publications back in Italy. Now, when, when I moved here, I was still a journalist, but not in games. I did a few things in games, but like not uh, not crazy, so, so to speak. So um, what what is it like? What kind of challenges have you have you encountered? Uh, what kind of problems have you encountered? Um, what I remember some horror stories, so that's why I'm I'm asking. Well, I think uh, it's a truly a great time to dive into video games uh, development in Italy right now. Uh, I think uh, it's an exciting opportunity for Italy. The industry is booming with the new software housing popping up uh, and a fresh wave of talented uh, individuals. Uh, plus, uh, there are educational institutions and training programs that are helping people acquire the necessary skills to be impactful in this industry. But uh, I have to say, it's a bit unfortunate that video games are still seen uh, mostly as something for kids here in Italy. And this perception uh, is combined with a lack of support from uh, the government that uh, is holding the industry back. But uh, um, people, I think, uh, are starting to recognize the artistic uh, value, cultural value of video games. And maybe there's uh, a shift in perception. This may be leading uh, to more collaboration, events and initiatives like uh, the extremely successful uh, first playable uh, in uh, in Florence uh, this summer i don't know we are we are there you know we'll be there yeah i, I totally agree i mean you were mentioning the the fact that it's uh, game development is recognized in italy it's a bit of a hard reality because you know uh, there's there isn't much funding and all of that as opposed to well to be fair a lot of my friends who are still game journalists still hear those stories from um, game developers in Italy. And uh, as opposed to what happens here in the UK, um, in the UK, for example, and in other parts of Europe, I, I, I believe, there are like, especially in Germany, I think, there are special um, organizations that look after game developers in their funding. Like there's the UK Game Funds, I think, Games Fund, I think, here. There's UKIE, uh, which looks after... Um, and takes care of game developers in uh, the rights, their right to exist and all of that. So I suppose Italy is a bit behind in that sense, but it will catch up as it's always done. Uh, I suppose it's just a matter of time, unfortunately. But yeah. Um, so, well, I guess we're nearing the end now. Um, there's, a, there's a bit of a fun question for you. Imagine you're writing a letter to yourself but 10 years younger, what would you say? Okay. Stay strong and, uh, and resist to your adversities uh, because you will be repaid very soon. Yeah, that's, that's a great message. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be able to resonate with that. And lastly, if you had unlimited budget and time, what game do you think you would create? Oh my God, a never ending uh, uh, narrative uh, explorative game. Oh, oh, about narrative explorative games, actually, now that you mentioned them, have you played Heaven's Vault? Actually, I, I didn't. You didn't. I do recommend that one because it's a very beautiful narrative exploratory adventure uh, by Inkle, the Inkle Studios, the developers of 80 Days, which you may have heard of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So they're the same Very developers. For Omen, for there you go. Well. Yeah, uh, they're the same developers. So the style is the same. There's a lot of branching narrative, a lot of things to discover, and it's just a beautiful journey through this space nebula where you just discover an ancient civilization. And because you guys love merging um, history and real historical facts with fiction, this is particularly it's going to be particularly great for you, I suppose. It's it's going to help you a lot. And it, you're also going to enjoy it a lot because there's a lot of history there. There's a lot of transcribing scripts, um, great. finding manufacts and exploring ancient moons and all that stuff. So 
yeah, give it a try because I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. And uh, then maybe shoot me an email and tell me what uh, what you thought of it. Um, but yeah, so I will. amazing. Uh, so uh, time for some parting words now, I suppose. So I know you're working on your next project and uh, it's going to be released soon or anyway, it's in the works. Tell me a bit yeah. more about what you guys are doing right now. Um, what is what is your current project about? Well, um, have you heard about Omenic City of Plague? Yeah, yes. we are working to the sequel. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, I think it's called 1927, so it's even more in the Lovecraft lore yeah. uh, of, of that period. Yeah, the Roaring Twenties. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We are in New York, and uh, he, he's uh, a reporter of the New York Gazette, and uh, he has to investigate uh, a mysterious disappearance of a child. Wow, it sounds so noir. Uh, yeah. so, so so roaring 20s. No, it's amazing. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. And uh, at what stage are you? Do you think you think you're in a good place? Do you think you're going to maybe release a demo soon if it's not already out there, of course? No, that, there, there's no demo out uh, right now, but uh, we think uh, 2024 we will uh, release this game. Yeah, something to look forward to. Q1. Oh, great. Okay. So right beginning of next year. That's that's great. Something to look forward to then. Well, um, I guess I guess that's it, Ramon. Thank you so much for being uh, for, for accepting to be in the podcast. And thank you to, to Tiny Bull Studios as well as a team for wanting to be featured. Um, you guys are doing an amazing work, uh, an amazing job and are doing amazing work. I, I can tell uh, by your enthusiasm and everything that you said about the studio. Uh, uh, no worries. So uh, as a last thing, where can other people find you? And if they do, how can they support you? Well, uh, you can find us on the, the classic social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. But we use mainly we mainly use Twitter uh, for for our community and because the industry is all there. So um, you can follow us there and uh, to to stay in the loop with our latest projects and uh, you can there engage with uh, our community. If you want to support our team, uh, you also can follow us on Steam because uh, uh, we are working on the new Omenic City project uh, and uh, so uh, it would be a great help if you want to uh, add it to your wish list. And uh, actually, that's that's all. Perfect. Okay. Wish listing the game is always a big help. Okay. So well, I'll put all of these links in the description of the episode, of course. And uh, yeah, thank you again, Ramon. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. And uh, good luck with your Omnixitio sequel. And that's all, folks. <laughs> on a wrap on another episode of the Indie Divers podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe to the show, tell your friends. Now you can even join the Discord server, as I said in the opening of this episode, um, so you can uh, become a more active part of this beautiful indie game dev or indie game loving community. Um, the only way to support the show right now is to follow on Twitter, but now you can also join the Discord server, so, you know, uh, there's one more thing there. And, uh, yeah, also, if you are an indie game developer yourself, please get in touch, because I always, always love to hear from you guys when you want to be featured on the show. Um, but yeah, so, I guess I will see you, or, you know, speak to you in the next episode of the Indie Divers podcast, which is going to be a very very special one indeed. So yeah, see you then.